Hey guys, Pritchie here. In this video, we're going to recreate uh, part of a website uh, from a UI kit which I created a couple months ago on uh, uh, UI8, uh, which uh, you can see in the link in the description. So we're going to recreate uh, this uh, very first uh, section. So without further ado, let's jump into Figma. And uh, the very first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to create uh, a frame, which is going to be 1440 pixels of width, uh, since uh, this is a good, uh, uh, place to start whenever you're dealing with uh, a desktop uh, website. So let's uh, click uh, on uh, the actual frame and we're going to rename it to one. And then uh, we're going to start uh, by adding a layout grid, which uh, we're going to change to columns. So let's break it down to 12 columns. Let's add a little bit of margin on the sides. And uh, after that, uh, we're going to change the color to something which is a little bit lighter so that it doesn't interfere too much uh, as we are designing. So let's uh, go over here and we're going to try and recreate the logo as best as we can. Uh, it's going to be a placeholder, of course, so we're not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, but uh, just to have a base understanding of uh, this uh, uh, layout. So we're going to create this rectangle. We're going to use command C and command V in order to copy it. And uh, let's keep it uh, as it is for now. Let's also uh, select these two rectangles, add a little bit of a rounded corner to them uh, so that they look a little bit better. And uh, let's increase uh, the stroke just a bit uh, so we have that nice uh, bold effect uh, for the actual logo. So let's bring this one here a little bit down and let's use the scale tool in order to make it a little bit smaller. <clears throat> and uh, another thing that we're gonna do right after that is we're going to set the tone by adding the different uh, uh, header elements over here. So let's increase the size just a little bit. And uh, we are going to use uh, shift plus the option key in order to create a duplicate of this. And then after that, a really cool trick is using a command D just a few times in order to create the different other menu items. Let's write here services, team, pricing, blog, and contact us. And we're going to have our base menu going. Let's uh, make this one medium. Let's bring it on the far right. And then we're going to use uh, the distribute uh, horizontal spacing in order to make sure that the spacing in between uh, is uh, consistent uh, between uh, the different uh, menu items. I can actually go over here and I'm going to just redo this one more time uh, just to give it a little bit more uh, spacing on the side and uh, we have our base for this uh, header section. Now let's duplicate one of these uh, and uh, we're going to write uh, the actual headline which is going to be the UI kit for startups and uh, we're going to increase uh, the font size considerably since uh, this is going to be the H1 of the page. And uh, before we move on, uh, I'm actually going to create uh, the base background for this. So let's use the pen tool and uh, let's uh, basically go all the way down. Uh, and uh, we're going to select this. We're going to change uh, this one to be a section, which is going to be curved. And uh, let's go over here. And let's close it up so that it goes through all of the box. All right, at this point, uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to double click on this, let's bring it a little bit more on the left, <clears throat> and uh, let's bring this one down here. We're going to need to tweak uh, this element so that uh, it's a little bit more consistent uh, using the option Alt key and uh, Another trick that we can do here is we, we can actually update it later. But uh, as long as we have uh, the base going uh, to continue, it's going to be fine. Let's bring it down just a little bit. And we're going to 
bring this one here as well. And uh, here we go. All right, now at this point, what you can do is we can redo it using uh, the mirror angle. And uh, here we go. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to add uh, a background, uh, which is going to be a linear. So let's bring it from here to here. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to basically use this uh, blue tint. Let's add another one here. It's going to be, to be more towards the blue. And I think we have uh, the base uh, <clears throat> for this background. All right, let's bring it, let's bring it here and inside of the actual frame. Now let's select all of these elements, let's make them white. And uh, for some reason, this part here is still not really looking good. So I'm just going to tweak this uh, just a bit more. And uh, it's tricky also to see it in the, in the blue. And uh, like that, uh, I think we're, we're heading more towards the right direction. Don't really want like uh, too much of, a, of an angled view on these type of elements. And uh, this one is looking a little bit better. All right, at this point, what we're gonna do is we're going to duplicate this uh, and uh, we're going to use uh, some uh, Lorem Ipsum text in order to create the basic description. So let's decrease the font size over here. Let's use some cupcake ellipsum and let's increase the line height in between these elements. All right. Now at this point, what we're gonna do next is we're going to create the actual button. And let's duplicate this text. Let's bring it all the way up. Let's write start now. And uh, here we go. Let's make it bold. And now we're going to change the gradient uh, so we have this uh, nice uh, good looking gradient. So over here, let's make it linear. Let's bring this one here. Let's bring this other one over here and we're going to add this uh, this linear gradient uh, to the mix it's not an effect uh, so we have a small drop shadow going for us and uh, we are going also to basically copy and paste the uh, the original elements uh, into the mix so here we go here we have uh, our basic header and uh, when it comes to this um, uh, these mockups uh, it's pretty easy to find them uh, online or even in uh, the figma library so of course you're you're asking yourself hey what if i don't have the, <laughs> the original file how can i create this uh, these mockups and uh, what i would do is uh, essentially going here under the figma community and uh, I would search for mockups directly from here. If uh, that's working. And uh, you're going to find all sorts of different mockups uh, for both devices uh, and uh, also um, so, so for mobile devices and also the desktop devices. So there's definitely a lot of choice that you have and uh, you can leverage that. And then afterwards you can simply uh, remove the columns uh, and to continue with uh, the red. So this is the base uh, for this uh, website. Now it's your turn and uh, you can tweak it uh, a little bit. It doesn't need to be 100% uh, the same, but um, hope this video was helpful. And I want to remind you that on my channel, you're going to find over 700 videos on uh, UI UX design. And uh, recently uh, what I did is uh, I also I uh, give away pretty much all of my courses almost for free, uh, over 40 hours of content uh, 
which uh, you can find uh, still in the link in the description and uh, courses which cumulatively they were I was charging uh, over one thousand dollars for all of the courses and now they're yours at just nine bucks and this covers pretty much everything for how to get started in UI UX design how to create a portfolio how to learn Figma Sketch and Adobe XD from from scratch and even how to sell and find high uh, ticket design clients like I did for the past ten years so if you're interested in leveling up your career or you are starting and uh, you need a blueprint uh, this is going to be helpful so this is pretty much it for this video hope it was helpful and i'll see you in the very next one